Hello everyone and welcome to another Make Do Kangaroo class. Okay, I think the very first thing we should do is the kangaroo song because that is the very first thing we would do in class, isn't it? So I'm going to put the kangaroo song on and you can go as wild as you like. You're in your own house, your own environment, wherever, whichever room you're in. You can run around, jump around as mad as you want because we can then get rid of all of that energy that we might have stored up in our bodies and we can come and sit down at the table nice and calm afterwards and start our artwork. Okay, so let's get that job done first. I'm going to put on the music and when you hear the music, stand up and start running around your room and jumping up and down. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to join you for a bit. I'll jump up and down too. Can you hear that? Right, ready to go? Stand up. to sit down and start your artwork. Now, this is the very first class that we're going to do in the month of March. So we're now in March, which is the very first mar uh, month of springtime. Oh, I'm still out of breath after all that jumping about. I need to try and get fitter. Right, so this is the first month of spring. Lots of things happen in springtime, maybe in your garden, if you've got a garden, or maybe when you're out on a walk or you're going to visit a park, you might see some flowers beginning to come up through the earth. Maybe nice white snowdrops, have you anybody seen them? Or some yellow daffodils are beginning to come up too. So they're lovely, the first flowers of springtime those flowers normally are. Um, I have been hearing a lot of birds tweeting in the morning, so lots of baby animals are born in the springtime. Lots of baby birds and lambs and chicks. But there's also a very, very important day, special day in March, and that is called Mother's Day. Has anyone heard of that before? A day where you get to tell your mother how much they mean to you, how much you love them, maybe say thank you to them for looking after you so well. Maybe you want to give them a card, give them a present maybe even, but even if you just want to run them a lovely bath or make them a cup of tea, maybe let them sit down and read a book for a little while maybe just do everything that they ask you to do that one day that would be lovely yeah so it's a day for you to spoil your mummy okay and that is this sunday that sunday that's mother's day very special day 
So we are going to get prepared for that day because we are going to make sure that we can make something special for your mums. All right. So in your packs, what you're going to need to get is the plain sheet of big white paper. Yep. And there should be one of these bags. Yep. So it's the bag that has the lollipop sticks in it and the stickers. Okay, and so the first thing you're going to need to get out of that bag are these two things. Your brown little plant pot and a lovely poem for your mummy. Shall I read the poem and see what the poem says? So the poem says, I've left some little fingerprints on just about every wall, on furniture, doors and windows. I've really marked them all. Here are some that won't rub off to remember I was small because I'll love you forever, even when I'm big and tall. So I'm going to show you. Here is, do you see the lovely picture that we are going to give to our mummies? Now, it's, it's like a bunch of flowers, isn't it? Lots of lovely, big, colourful flowers. And can anyone maybe tell what I've used to make the flowers? They look like a special shape, don't they? The same shape as your... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look like that. Same shape as your hand, isn't it? Like that. So we're going to use our hands to make our handprints of our beautiful flowers. And what we'll have to do is put decorate our plant pot with lots of lovely painty fingerprints because that is what the poem is all about, about leaving your mummy some fingerprints that she can't rub off because they're on your plant pot and they're made out of paint. And we're gonna give your mummy some lovely painted handprints for her to remember how little your hands once were. Okay, now you might see, I've also got this Happy Mother's Day sticker. That should be in your pack as well. You can put that wherever you want. You can add it to your painting if you want to add it here. You can uh, put it on something completely different. If you're giving your mummy a card, you can pop it on the card. You can pop it on the picture frame that we're gonna make later. Do whatever you want with that sticker, okay? Just in case you wonder what that one is. Right, so you also have forgotten to tell you in this bit, you need, out of your bag, your long bit of cardboard, okay? So your long bit of cardboard is for making your green stems for your flowers to be on the top of, all right? So I think that's the very first thing we should do. You can really do this in whatever order you want. If you want to, you can glue your plant pot on first. Then you can paint your stems coming out of your plant pot. Okay? If you think you be you can be careful enough not to go over your plant pot with your with your green stems and your green lines. Or you can do what I think what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to paint my green stems on first. And then I'm going to stick my pot over the top, okay, to cover up any mistakes I might have made. All right, so let's get started and do that first. So the stems of flowers, I don't know if maybe you've got a plant in the house or you've maybe got a lovely vase full of flowers. Have a look and see what colour the stems are because plants usually have green stems. So... Maybe you want to get some green paint, but this is your painting. Remember, I always say this is your painting. If you want your plant to have purple stems, blue stems, completely up to you. Really doesn't matter. It's your artwork. But I'm going to choose green and I'm going to dip my bit of cardboard into my paint. And then I'm going to go, remember we do stamping in class, down and up, down and up, down and up. That's it. Now you want your lines to just be in the middle of your paper, okay? We don't really want any down at the bottom. We don't really need any away out at the edges. 
If you can, keep it in the middle of the paper. Now, depending on your age, some of you might be a little bit too little to understand that. And you might just put green lines everywhere. And again, that's okay too. Yeah. Everybody's different and everybody's artwork is different. And that is okay. So, let me see. Some green lines in the middle of my paper. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue my plant pot at the bottom. Okay, so it looks like the stems are growing out of the plant pot. So if you get your plant pot and a glue stick, and remember we have to put the glue all the way right to the edges, right to the edges or else the edges don't stay down and they begin to curl up. So we want to get glue right to the edges and then we can get our painting and we can stick our plant pot down. There we go. And we do rub, 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 pat, 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 pat. And then we have that down. Okay. So next, you have to decide what colour of flowers do you want to give to your mum? So I have chosen a few different colours. Um, I have red and oh, stretch all the way over here. I have purple and I have yellow. And I might just, I don't know, I might just stick to these three. I'll see how I feel. Um, now you can maybe ask your mummy what her favourite colours are. Um, and maybe you would like to give her some flowers of her favourite colour. Maybe you would like to choose your favourite colour for your flowers. Whatever you want. I'm choosing three colours. You can choose more than that. You can choose less than that. You can just have um, one colour of flower. Doesn't matter. Whatever you would like to do. So I'm going to put out some of my paint there and this is where we start painting our hands so remember get wipes or a cloth or something that you can wipe your hands on between the colors okay and um you can even wipe your paintbrush on your on a wipe or a cloth or something in between the colors so the colors don't mix too much all right so i'm maybe going to start with what do you think yellow what was that yellow now not everybody likes painting their hand. It feels cold. It feels a little bit tickly. But not everybody likes those feelings. So if you are someone that doesn't like the feeling of paint on their hands, then you don't have to do this. You can use your paintbrush and paint maybe nice... Like I'll maybe show you maybe like a nice big, like a nice big circle, like a sun, like that. So you can maybe have lots of those kind of shapes for your flowers. You know, you don't have to do a handprint. I'm going to put my handprint up here. It's nice for your mummies to see your handprint because every mummy loves to see their child's handprint because it just reminds them about how little you are. But if that's not something that you like to do, then don't feel you have to do it. If you want to just use a paintbrush, like, and, and um, you know, paint your flowers on using your brush, or you can use a sponge, sponge it on. Um, that's okay too, okay? So I've done a yellow flower, so now I'm gonna wipe my hands and I'll wipe my paintbrush and I'm going to choose a red, red one out. And I might do a couple of red flowers because red is a lovely bright colour. So paint all the way. Remember, if you're going to paint your hands, every single finger all the way over your hand, okay? See? Now I'm going to try and 
find a space that hasn't got any paint on it for you to put your handprint down on, okay? Remember, all the way down, all the way up, okay? We don't want smearing like this. We don't want that. We want down and up, nice and clear, okay? I'm going to put another bit of paint on my hand because I'm going to do another red flower. Like so I'm going to go, oh, will I go over here? So difficult to know where to put your hand. Right, I'm going to go all the way down. Press, press, press those fingers and up. Now, I've got quite big hands compared to you probably. So your handprints may not take up as much room of the paper as my handprints are taking up. And you may notice, I'm going to get some of this red paint off. You may notice that, look, I've got holes in the middle of my flowers, do you see? See these holes there? So either you can leave them as they are, you can fill them in with the, the colour of the paint that you um, painted your handprints with, like that, and you can just fill them in if you want them blank. Um, or if you want, you can fill them in with a different colour. So sometimes the middle of, of flowers have got the pollen inside them, which is yellow. You know, the bees like to go into flowers to get all the pollen. And you've got some yellow stamens coming up yeah, that the pollen are on. So quite a lot of flowers have yellow in the centre of them. So you may well, you could get a little bit of yellow and you could colour that space in yellow if you wanted to do that, like it's the middle of the flower. So again, remember, this is your painting. You do what you feel is right for you. Okay. Now, final colour I am doing is purple. I don't know why I've chosen purple. Purple's not usually a colour. I would choose. Is it one of your favourite colours, purple? It's never really been one of mine, though it is a nice colour. Right, I'm going to go and put down here. Here we go. Press, 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 press. I'm back up. You see? And I might just leave it like that. I think. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to put in another one. I am wondering whether I fill in that middle bit of that purple one because that's quite... There we go. Yeah, that better. So now I need to clean up this hand. I wonder how many flowers you have done for your plant. How many handprints you've done, or maybe you've not done handprints at all. Maybe you've used your paintbrush to paint it. You'll need to, once you've completed this video and you've finished your lovely painting for your mummy, you'll need to take a photograph and ask your mummies to send it to me. Yeah, so that I can see how wonderful your artwork is. So that is us now all finished with our paint. I'm going to put it to one side over there. No more painting, but there is still some gluing and sticking. Like. So, find your poem. Actually, that is completely wrong. There is still some painting to do. Can you know what we've not done? Do you know? Can you remember? I'm going to bring this all over here. What we've not done is the little fingerprints the most important thing we've not decorated our pot i was thinking our pot looked very plain so we need to decorate our pot look with all our smudgy fingerprints so what we can do if you want first is we're going to glue on we're going to glue on our poem now i have glued it onto the pot 
and that's completely fine. But I've also got another one here, look, and I've glued the poem down on the corner of the paper because I wanted my pot to still stay all nice and spotty after I decorated it. So if you feel like you just want to decorate your pot and you don't want to put your poem over the top of your lovely decorated pot, then you can always pop your, po your poem somewhere else on the paper. It doesn't have to be there, but that's just the place that I'm going to put it. Okay. You can put it where you would like. So once we've stuck on our, po our poem, you can take your little finger and if you've got any leftover paint, can we get a little bit of red? You can start decorating your pot with spots, little spots of paint from your flowers. Okay. Spot, 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 spot. So again, we don't want rubbing, no rubbing, even though it might be really tempting to start rubbing. We just want down and up. Okay, you see that there? We're gonna go down and up, down and up, like that. Then I'm maybe gonna get a wee bit of purple as well, and I'll go down and up, 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 down and up. Perfect until you have decorated your pot. There you go. So now we're finished with the paint, and the paint can go away. There we go. Let's see. So we've got some lovely little fingerprints all the way over our pot and you can put some over your poem as well if you want to put some over your poem try not to cover your poem all up in paint or else you won't be able to read it but you can put some fingerprints all over your poem and that is your mother's day painting finished which i'm sure she's going to absolutely love and it will brighten up a real a really sunny room maybe Maybe your mummy could pop it up in the kitchen or sometimes these are really lovely ones to frame as well and keep because they're just so pretty if you get a really nice hand print. That is. Okay, so again, like I say, you've got your Happy Mother's Day sticker. If you want to stick that on, you can stick that on as well or you can use that another time. All right, so well done everyone. If you've finished, remember, take a photograph and send it to me so I can see and put it somewhere to dry okay so i'm going to stick mine over here to dry i'm going to move my paint all out of the way so you might need to go wash your hands because we have been doing lots of hand painting little finger painting so if you need to go and wash your hands just now pause this video and go and give your hands a wash and I'm going to get the book out, okay, for story time, which means if you want to go and grab a snack, I don't know what time you are watching this video at, but if it's appropriate for you to have a snack right now, maybe ask mummy, then you go and get a drink and a snack and then you can come back and get all ready for story time, okay, get cosy somewhere. The story today is this one. Douglas Douglas and it's written by David Melling it's a lovely one this book and does anyone know what Douglas what animal is Douglas who is he he looks like a big brown bear doesn't he there's lots of Douglas Douglas books let me show you the front cover you might have some of these already. Maybe you have this book, the Huggless Douglas book, but there's some other Huggless Douglas books that you can get. If you really enjoy this one, then you can maybe have a look for other ones all about Huggless Douglas. All right, but let's start reading this one first, okay? It's a really nice one for Mother's Day. All right, first page. And it's nice for this time of year as well, because it's all about springtime. So one spring morning, 
a big yawn oh, came from the back of a deep, dark cave. Who was it? Look, it's a bear and he's just waking up. It was a young brown bear and his name was Douglas. And there's Douglas just waking up, giving a big yawn and a big stretch. Do any of you do that in the morning when you first get out of bed? Have a big yawn and a big stretch. And look, Douglas, I think, goes to bed with that lovely blue teddy bear. Maybe you have a special toy that you take to bed too. I wonder what Douglas is going to do now he's awake. He puts on the light and he says, I need a hug, said Douglas. Hmm. So he wriggled out of his pajamas and he brushed his hair. Look how long it's going to take him to brush all of that hair. He's covered in hair. Do you brush your hair when you get up in the morning? Get all the tugs out. Yep, sometimes that can be a bit difficult. And he put on a lovely red scarf and he went out to look for one. He went out to see if he could find a hug. Do you like to have a hug in the morning? Yeah, find mummy or daddy and give them a big hug. My best hugs are big, thought Douglas. So he went up to the biggest thing he could find. What do you think he's found to hug? What does this look like? Hmm. He wrapped his arms all the way around it and he gave it a big squeeze. <gasps> does it look like a good thing to hug? I'm not sure it does. It looks like it could be a really big rock, like a big boulder, something big and hard and heavy. <gasps> it didn't feel quite right, thought Douglas. Oh, it's a bit too heavy, he thought. Look. He's fallen right over because the stone is so heavy to pick up and carry and give a cuddle to. So, thought Douglas, my best hugs are tall. He's going to find something else to hug. So he went up to the tallest thing he could find. What's he found to hug? A big tree trunk. Have any of you hugged a tree trunk before? Some people hug trees and they say it feels really nice. Let's find out if Douglas likes to hug a tree. He hugged it at the bottom and he hugged it around the middle and then he hugged it as high up as he could reach. Hmm. But no, it was all wrong and he got a splinter. Ouch! Have any of you had a splinter before? A little bit of kind of wood that gets stuck in your skin. It's quite annoying. It can be quite sore. That didn't work for Douglas, did it? So, he needs to find something else to hug. My best hugs are comfy, thought Douglas. So, he trotted towards a cosy looking bush. Now, I'm not sure I would describe a bush as being cosy and comfy, but Douglas seems to think it would be nice to cuddle. Look. He cuddled the bush, but something felt a bit odd. Can you see something, like, in the bush? Hmm, what are these here? Look, where? There. Little eyes. Do you think something lives in the bush? Oh, maybe it does. Oh. The 
the leaves quivered and trembled. The bush was moving. I wonder what lives in the bush. Oh no, where's the bush gone? And it ran away. Oh look, it's got little legs. I wonder who could be in the bush. What are all these? Do you know? Lots and lots of sheep were hiding in that bush. Give us a hug, cried Douglas. Look, and he went running after all the sheep until he could grab them all to give them a big hug. No, bagged the sheep, we're too busy. He scooped up armfuls anyway and tried to cuddle them gently, but they kicked and squirmed and they didn't like it at all. The sheep don't look very happy, do they? I don't like, I don't think sheep like to get hugs. They like just to be out in their fields, don't they? Eating grass. I'm not sure they like cuddles. Oh, look, so Douglas goes up to, does anyone know what that is in the, up in the tree? It's an owl. So Douglas goes to speak to the wise owl. But look, what's Douglas still got on his bottom? There's a sheep on Douglas's bottom. Oh, Douglas, you've got a sheep stuck to you. Poor Douglas. Why can't I find a hug, he said. So the owl said, well, if I want a hug, said the wise old owl. I just sit in my tree and, oh, let me try, whooped Douglas. And he scrambled up the tree so he could sit next to the owl. But he soon found himself in a clumsy muddle. Oh, Douglas. To whoot a whit, said the owl crossly. Oh no, look at all the owl feathers that have fallen off. I don't think the owl really wanted Douglas to come up to the tree with him. He doesn't look very happy either. Oh, where's Douglas going now? I only wanted a hug, sniffed Douglas. Perhaps there's one down here, he thought. <gasps> Who does he find? He felt something long-eared and rabbity and he gave it a tug. <gasps> look, look at him tugging on that poor bunny's tail. And the rabbit was just in his burrow, chopping up carrots. I don't think he's going to want a hug. What do you think? Hmm. Douglas could tell that the rabbit didn't really want a hug. He sniffed again. And then, do you know what he did? Without thinking, Douglas wiped his nose on the rabbit's bottom. Ooh, poor bunny rabbit. Would you want a bear to wipe his wet nose on you? Oh, I wouldn't. Excuse me, shouted the rabbit. Put me down. Oh, poor Douglas. Look. But I need a hug, said Douglas, and I can't find one anywhere. Oh, I see, said the rabbit kindly. Come with me. Look. She took Douglas by the paw and she led him all around and about. Where is she going to take him, I wonder? Hmm. And at last they came to a deep, dark cave where a sleepy someone was just waking up. <gasps> Yawn! Oh, 
someone was just waking up and yawning, just like Douglas did at the start of this book. And the rabbit's pointing in the cave saying, you need to go in there to find your hug. I wonder who could be in the cave. Hmm. Does anyone know? Can anyone guess? Let's see. There we go. Douglas goes into the cave. He peeked inside and he had the funniest feeling that he knew that someone very well. Hug, asked Douglas. And he ran as fast as he could towards... See if I can... Oh, can you guess who's running towards? His... <gasps> Oh, look, what a lovely hug his mummy is giving him. <gasps> Come to think of it, my best hugs are always from someone I love, said Douglas. And he snuggled into the biggest warm in arms he knew. <gasps> and they're having a lovely hug together, Douglas and his mummy. I'm sure your mummy loves to get hugs from you too. And look, even down here, the sheep and the rabbit and the owl are all having a lovely hug together. Oh. And that's a lovely story called Hugless Douglas. Okay, so we finished maybe our juice and our snack. Do you think it's time to start the second activity? Yep. So in your packs, thank you, you should have left your lollipop sticks and your stickers. Okay. So we are going to make like these. Or are you going to make one of these? Okay. So these are our lovely Mother's Day photo frames. So if you can find a photograph of you, maybe to put in like that, like, this is a photograph look of my son Nairn and my daughter Belle when they were really tiny. And this was the time when Nairn loved to hug his sister. He doesn't really hug his sister that much anymore, much to her disappointment. He's getting too big, he says, to be hugging little sisters. Oh. So if you can find a lovely photograph that you could put at the back of this frame, and then this is a lovely photo frame for your mummy to give her for Mother's Day so that she could look at how beautiful your face is. Yeah. So what we're going to do first is we are going to glue our um, lollipop sticks together to create this square frame okay so that's the first thing that we're going to do so why don't we just get on with that just now yeah you can either use a glue stick or if you've got pva you can use pva pva will dry a little bit stronger even though it might be a little bit slidey to start off with until it dries and gets tacky and um, prit stick will glue it together as well and i have used prit stick for this one and it's stayed absolutely strong stuck together no problem at all so whatever you have available that is what you use okay and you want to lay them down Let's see if you can see this see if you can make a square now it doesn't matter how much you have kind of sticking out see how there's like they're all kind of sticking out at the side and bits are sticking out that's okay we don't mind that at all, okay? But you just want to try and create a bit of a square shape like that. Then once, you, once you're happy, it doesn't even, mine are a little bit squint and that's absolutely okay too. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you can get your glue and you can lift it up and you can put the glue where you're going to need it to stick. The lollipop sticks and give it a little press. Okay, and we'll do the same down at the other side. Put a little blob of glue, little blob of glue, and then stick them down. Now, 
this is where it's up to you okay we're going back to you again this is your picture frame you decide how it looks okay i'm just going to give you a few examples but it's up to you so i haven't painted this one i've left this one as the wood and then i've stuck on all of my mother's day stickers and i then i've got some pens and I've drawn some love hearts and I've written, I love you, a little message on it. Okay, just like that. You could draw flowers, you could even just do little patterns, little squiggles and lines, or you could colour it in with the pen. Completely up to you. Okay, so that's one option. This one, I have painted the whole frame. So if you want your frame to be a particular colour, this one's like a pinky red colour. So if maybe your mummy has got a favourite colour and you want it to be the, the colour of your mummy's uh, favourite one, then you can paint it that colour. All right. So your choice, up to you. So if you want to paint it, go and get your colour of paint out. You're going to need your paint and you're going to need a paintbrush. And then you want to paint it all. Maybe then what you want to do is leave it to dry a little bit before you can stick your stickers on. Though you can fire on, stick your stickers on and it'll all dry together. Okay, it just might be a little bit messier. Or you don't paint it and you leave it the plain wood, but you can use your pens to colour on it. Or you could, again, everybody loves a bit of glitter, don't they? So if you wanted to even glue some glitter onto it, glue some little gems this is yours this is your design i'm just giving you and showing you how to do i can't i'm not even sure i can pick this up without it falling apart the the basic frame once you've made the basic frame it's completely up to you how you decorate it and what it looks like all right so i'm maybe just going to use pen for mine but you might be getting cracked on and started uh, painting your one yeah so i'm um, maybe going to do some uh, wiggly shapes i'll do some or some i'll tell you what i'm gonna i'm maybe gonna draw some nice flowers on mine so i'm gonna do some leaves So this is where you get to be as creative as you want to be. If you want to just leave it as the plain wood, stick some stickers onto it and you're done. Great. You can do that. There are no hard and fast rules about what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to put some wiggly lines. coming off the set. Look. So I've just drawn some leaves going up the side of mine and then I'm going to draw some flowers and then I'm going to stick my stickers, I think. So what kind of flowers? What colour of flowers am I going to have? Some pink flowers? Maybe? yellow center oops it's still really slidey with the with the glue so you might find i've used pva glue in this you might find the pva glue is still a little bit slidey when you try and stick things to it break through all my pens and then once you're happy with your design, you can then 
get your stickers. So you might, you'll have all different types of stickers. I've got a cup of tea. Mummies always love a cup of tea. I love a cup of tea. My mummy loves a cup of tea. But maybe your mummy likes something different. So try and peel the back of your sticker off. Oh, didn't do a very good job of that. There we go. Decide where are you going to put your sticker? Uh, I'm maybe going to put my cup of tea down there. And then I've got one that says the best mum. So I'm going to put that one up at the top. Then I'm going to put this one down here. Where are you sticking your stickers, I wonder? There we go. And I'm going to do one more there. There we go. Okay. Now, I think that's my glue pretty much dry, actually, which is good. Now, I'm just going to draw another couple of flowers. And yeah, down there. And then, there we go, do we purple one, and then that's it, there, and then you can do whatever you want, okay, and then you just need to find a picture to pop in it. Okay, and then that's your picture frame finished. And you can give it to your mummy and I'm sure she will love it. She'll be super proud of how well you did making it. There we go. All right, good job everyone. Well done. Now, have you finished yours? Are you, are you already finished? Are you still busy making it? What I'm going to do then is I'm going to pop the Tidy Up song on. So if you're still busy making, you pause this video and you carry on making. Then as soon as you're ready to start tidying up, remember tidying up is very important. If you do a job and you make a mess, it's important that you tidy that mess away. So let's get the Tidy Up song on and you can unpause this video and you can listen to the tidy up song to help you motivate you to tidy up right we're ready here we go here we go right ready hear the music right time to tidy up tidy up tidy up time to tidy up get all your paints away Put your glue away. Yeah, get all that tidy up. Time to close your book, close your book, close your book. Time to close your book and put it on the shelf. Does the room look clean? Does the room look nice and clean? Get your wipes away. Make the room look nice and neat, nice and neat, nice and neat. Make the room look nice and neat. Thank you very much. And then, if you're all tidy, go and find your bubbles, okay? And we you should have play, some stickers as well. Okay. You can give neat. yourself a sticker Nothing when you're finished. Neat. Got to find a place to keep things safe. Thank you very much. Oh, fabulous. Well done. Are you tidy still tidying up? Tidy up. Tidy Are you nearly tidy finished? Tidy you ready Put for you bubbles away. soon? Okay, let's go. Oh. Maybe give the table a little white too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Time to tidy up. Super job, everyone. My table's looking quite tidy. Are you ready? You read the bubble song's about to come out. You know? Right, get your bubbles out. Right, get your bubbles
Oh, well boys, now pick up the pace. Oh. What happened here? Well done. Great job. Give yourselves a big clap. Pat on the back. Well done. I'm going to clear all those bubbles away that have landed on my table. Fantastic job, everyone. So, you have made your Mother's Day painting and you've made your Mother's Day picture frame. Okay, so super job if you've managed both of those. Well done. Now, um, next week is going to be Tiger That Came to Tea. Do you all know that book, The Tiger That Came to Tea? And we're going to be making a tiger, a big tiger's face. And we're going to be making a little tea party. So we're going to have our plate with our sandwiches and our cakes, just pretend ones. So maybe after next week's video, once you've made all those things, you can sit and have a little pretend tea party with your toys. All right, so that'll be next week, the next video, Tiger That Came to Tea. All right, lovely. Thank you so, so much for joining me for another Make Do Kangaroo video. And I can't wait to see you all soon. All right, well done, everyone. See you later. Bye.